All right, today we're gonna to do some drop validation on my 7 Max. Uh, we've been shooting this for over a year now. Gunworks GLR action, long action. Gunworks climber. Hell's Canyon 26 inch carbon barrel. It's still got a Terminator brake. I'll be eventually swapping all these out for the rock slide brake. And chambered in 7 Max. Last year I was shooting 185 cutting edge bullets, uh, lasers, they did very well, but I really want to see what these 184 hybrids will do. I got a load developed, I did the my version of the optimal charge weight, load development, then we did seating depth. We're shooting in the threes. Uh, it had very, very low vertical out at 600 yards. Uh, so we're gonna shoot out at, seven, uh, at 1,000 and see what it does, I'm going to uh, start by just throwing one on paper and seeing where we where we hit. Uh, for several reasons, it's time to start doing cold bore mapping on it. So this will be a cold bore shot. We've got about a ten, a seven to ten mile an hour wind coming at one to two o'clock. I really don't like it. Uh, we get a lot of that here. You know, late late summer, early early fall it, it just makes it give a lot of horizontal i really would rather have a 90 or a 270 win but is what it is should have should have been a a half minute left hold but the wind is coming from the right so we're just going to go uh half minute to the right which would give us basically one minute of wind we'll go shoot this and mark the target. Here in a little bit, uh, after I'm done shooting this, we're gonna talk about uh, chronographs. I've had a lot of people ask me my opinion on chronographs. Uh, and this will be the first time that I'm shooting this lab radar with the quad pod. Hopefully it'll be a little bit more stable and give us a little more stable uh, velocities. But in any case, I've got it dialed 21 and a half minutes. I've got a half a minute dialed to the right. Cold bore, we're gonna shoot it and see what we get. All right, let's go down and mark the target. All right, the vertical was perfect. We're a click or two to the left. I'm not going to make a windage adjustment. We're just gonna fire two more, see where they impact versus that cold bore, and uh, I'll make a decision. The, like I said, the vertical was perfect. I, as long as it'll a group with a decent vertical today I'm, I'm gonna call it good this gun's been super impressive I am impressed with the the cartridge uh, it doesn't break the laws of physics like some on the internet try to claim it's super accurate it's easy to tune uh, I love it for what it is but it won't outrun larger case capacity cartridges uh, we're also testing out this maven rs4 it's not a new scope it's been around for a while but we're just getting our hands on one uh, my initial impression of it is it's a it's a very awesome scope uh, i love maven's toolless turrets you just unscrew that cap pull it off reset it to where you need to underneath that the zero stops uh, what I would consider to be somewhat standard. It's just, it's super easy to set. Um, they're nice, tactile feeling. Uh, the, the zoom range on this is nice. The glass is nice. I haven't done any serious comparisons with it next to like an ATAC R. Uh, the parallax and the, the zoom ring are 
a little magnification ring are a little on the stiff side I would like them to be a little less stiff but uh, it is what it is uh, it, it would not be a deal breaker for me I also not a huge huge fan of the reticle it's thicker than I like and it's a little busy on the bottom uh, but there's always going to be a compromise with the first focal plane scope um, and they've chosen to make it so it's probably going to be a little bit more usable on the lower end and it's not unusable on the top end I do like the center dot that makes it super easy it, it really takes care of all the issues that I would have with the thickness it it allows you to have a very fine aiming point I have no problem seeing uh, what I'm aiming at here at a thousand yards and putting the crosshair where it should be and in my opinion I'm not a big illuminated reticle guy I honestly have never used one and I don't know that I ever will but if you have to have it on a scope I really like and prefer the on off with every click so you turn it and it's on a certain brightness and then you turn another click it's off and you turn it another click and it's at a different brightness that that's really how I think they should be but we'll be doing a review on this we're not real quick to put out gear reviews until we've had a, a lot of time uh, to use them I, I don't like putting my stamp of approval on something when I haven't used it enough we're not going to be the the people that go out and shoot it one day and then tell you how awesome the scope is that you can't figure out anything in that kind of time but um, you know stay tuned we'll be shooting it a lot we'll be getting a, a feel for it having you know getting some experience behind it and then uh, eventually we'll have a review so uh, let's go ahead and put the second shot down and see uh, how it does a little bit slower than what they had been running but um, like I said we're going to talk about this chronograph here in a little bit but the position of the chronograph is going to affect some somewhat no matter how small it is it is going to affect the velocity reading it gives you and this could be a reason why that's a little slow I don't know but um, it is a consideration So between all the shots, we are getting quite a bit of uh, velocity spread. I guess I should note that these cases I'm shooting have only been uh, fire formed using pistol powder and toilet paper. There's definitely a sharper angle or a shoulder angle here. Yeah, it definitely, definitely is not completely formed. So that's something, something to note. I'm not going to get worried about what the groups look like today. I'm really just focusing on point of impact, generally speaking, is this the right drop? I will, I've got 50, 
already fire formed pieces of brass. Well, probably 40 because 10 of them are junk, but uh, somewhere in the 40. I will use those for hunting. We're just uh, going to use these for this type of work here. Let's go down and mark that. All right, I'm going to call it good for today. We've got five shots on paper down there. The point of impact is exactly where the point of aim is, so that means my ballistic data is correct. You've got right at a half minute five shot group out of a, I think this thing weighs nine and a half pounds. Actually, it's probably closer to 10 with this RS4 on it is a little bit heavier scope, but nonetheless, we're prone. Um, the only thing I would consider that I have, I've got a little bit heavier bag. I'm not using the, the hunter's wedge. I, I love that bag, but it's super light. It does, it does really good. Matter of fact, I really don't notice any huge differences, but I feel a little bit better when I don't have to carry the weight. So I'm 20 foot from the truck to carry a little bit heavier bag. Matter of fact, even a heavier bag than this would probably be uh, more beneficial. Um, but we've accomplished what I came here to do today with this. Uh, this quad pod seems to be working okay. Um, obviously, after five shots, I can't really tell. Uh, but uh, I'm going to do a whole video on how I walk, how I go through my uh, load development onto the drop validation and that type of stuff and so I, th I think a lot of people are gonna gonna laugh or you know whatever but what I do is I I am I would say I don't know at least 50% of the time I come out to shoot I'm doing load development on something we're always working on something we've always got a project different bullets different rifles whatever uh, I don't like inputting my data into shooter app it requires a lot of information and so don't mistake what i'm saying my favorite app on the iphone is shooter app and it's been a long time since i've owned android but i know they have shooter app for android it's i would say probably would be my favorite app for android as well it takes a lot of information and the reason why it takes a lot of information is because shooting out here at a thousand yards in varying conditions all that data does matter i'm not going to tell you it doesn't it absolutely does matter but for drop validation where i don't know for sure if the inputs are going to be correct i want something quick so i use an app called bullet drop i don't think they have it for Android I don't know I've looked in the the store I didn't see it it may be there but if you've got an iPhone I use an app called bullet drop it just asks for the basics again it's not something I would use for hunting purposes but all you need is the bullet weight the G1 BC I prefer to use the G7 and I do use it for my hunting uh, ballistics but for this it works fine uh, muzzle velocity the sight height, so how far the, the scope center is from the bore center, which you should already know. Your zero range, I prefer 200. I can't argue with 100. 100 is super easy. Almost every place you go can give you 100 yard zero. You can get to 100 yard zero. I prefer 200. I, the farther away you get, so they both have advantages. The farther away you, you get from the muzzle for your zero, the more uh, precise it's going to be long range but the problem with the longer you get from the the rifle is you have atmospheric conditions wind and stuff so that's the argument against it uh, like i said i i can't argue i just i prefer 200 it also gives me a slightly longer point blank range i can take shots at 300 with a little more confidence that i don't have to make any adjustments so back to the sap it's got a little spot in the bottom that stays pretty consistent it's not a it's not a always have to input but it's got temperature altitude altitude uh, barrack metric pressure and humidity the reason why I like this is because I can just come in here and I can change things like in a couple seconds versus shooter you have to go into the the rifle or the ammo and change it and then you have to put all the 
bullet lengths and barrel twists and all that stuff. And it, it does matter because when you're using Coriolis effect and uh, spin drift and all that stuff, which I do believe matters, it's not huge, but it does matter. If we're trying to get precise, as precise as I am and as precise as I really think you should be for, for taking shots at animals long range. Uh, some people don't agree with that, but it you're really you owe it to the animal to put to do everything you possibly can to put that bullet where it goes so those things matter but for out here for for drop validation it doesn't matter so it, then I use I use that it um, tells me that I need 21 and a half minutes I pull the trigger they hit at 21 and a half minutes I'll take that data I'll put it in G7 form I'll put it into shooter and then I'll backtrack and make sure all that works so I'll, I'll start using that uh, shooter app now and then I actually go put it into my SIG ABS 2400 and make sure that it lines up the next next times I shoot as well hopefully we'll have a Gunworks BR4 soon to be shooting and replace that uh, SIG but uh, for now we're using the SIG so that's it for this rifle I told you it'd be fairly short I probably talked a lot and, and actually made it longer but I'm very impressed with this bullet. The cutting edge bullets were super accurate. We killed a, an antelope last year at 600 yards. We killed a, a nice Kansas whitetail, but it was only like 250 yards. Um, I shot that, uh, unfortunately last year I, didn't, I couldn't get out here because of the crops. So we only got to shoot it out to 600 yards, but it was hitting where it should every time. And uh, the bullet was actually pretty impressive. But I wanted to try these 184s, see how they, uh, perform accuracy and precision wise but also we'll go uh, I plan on shooting some animals with it this fall so that's it for this rifle for today we'll go down and look at that target and uh, show you this is this is what I expect out of a rifle but uh, that's it for today all right there you go obviously I can't count I'm pretty sure down at the rifle I said five I only took four shots so we got the cold bore and then three follow-up shots uh, I'm not going to get the tape measure out uh, with the camera in my hand, but I did measure the vertical spread on that was max uh, right at 5 inches, which is half MOA. Um, fire form, still fire form and brass. I'll take it every time, and uh, that's really all you can expect. That's a dead animal every single time at 1,000 yards. So. Uh, the drop validation is right. The ballistic app is telling me the correct thing. I'll go ahead and put that into shooter and I'll put it into the SIG and uh, we'll be good to go.